Good morning. Welcome to uh, this meeting of the Oklahoma Air, Space, and Aeronautics Commission, January 30, 2024. The meeting notice was posted according to the requirements of the Open Meeting Act. This meeting will come to order. Uh, call roll, please. First Congressional District Commissioner Seth Phillips. Second Congressional District Commissioner Kevin Potter. Here. Third Congressional District Commissioner Chairman Charles Ortega. Here. Fourth Congressional District Commissioner Lindy Ritz. Here. Fifth Congressional District Commissioner Vice Chair Blake Rainey. Here. At large Commissioner Jim Putnam. At large Commissioner Jerry Hunter. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes. The draft of the minutes of the December 13, 2023 commission meeting has been sent to you and a copy is in your meeting packet. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If no corrections, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Okay, Commissioner Potter. Abstain. Commissioner, our Chairman Ortega. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Putnam. And Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, next item is item number four, financial report. Mr. Wadsworth, you are recognized, sir. Morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Starting out with the financial summary document. As of December 31st, the department had an ending cash balance of $21.3 million with encumbrances that totaled $14.9 million. Estimated statutory revenue for the remainder of FY24 is $8.2 million and outstanding reimbursements owed to the agency total about $714,000. The total amount of remaining expenditures that could be incurred in FY24 is $17.6 million, and the bulk of that is going to be about $14.9 million with the airport construction program, of course, provided those grants are approved. Leaves us with an expected available cash balance of negative $2.3 million. Um, as I mentioned in December, we will not be in the red. That would assume that every project is granted and paid in full by the end of June, and we know that is not possible. Um, that does go to show, though, that all the um, extra income we have received in the appropriations we do have committed to projects or programmed in the ACP this year. Total fiscal year to date expenditures are $3.6 million as of the end of December. Moving on to the revenue document, total statutory revenue collected in December was just over $1.1 million. Total statutory revenue collected through December this fiscal year is $4.5 million, which compares to $4.9 million last year. So as of the end of December, we were down about 9%. Um, I would note, since we're close to the end of the, this month, um, through today revenue compared to last year is almost identical, um, literally within a couple thousand dollars compared to last year with this month. So we've had a good month of revenue this month. And then finally, on the three-year average revenue document, you'll see that revenue collected this uh, fiscal year from registration fees, excise tax, fuel tax, and license plates is still about 1.2 million more than what our three-year average is. So overall, revenue is still doing really well. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions, comments, commissioners? Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, next is item number five, legislative and congressional regulatory update. Director Artes, you're recognized, sir. Morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well on this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning. Uh, kind of wish we were out in the golf course today and yesterday with how, uh, how beautiful that weather was, or at least flying an airplane. Um, much better than we were a week and a half ago in the, in the single digits. The uh, legislative uh, session is upon us. Uh, some of you might say it's actually already started with the special session that was uh, convened yesterday, um, but uh, starting next Monday. Regular session will begin, and of course, the, the month of February is uh, one of the busiest <clears throat> months of the session, given the uh, thousands of bills that are filed in both the House and the Senate, trying to make it through that first gate of committee work. Um, of course, we know that probably only 10 percent uh, or, or even less of, of the original filed bills make it through that first committee gate, and so we are preparing and meeting uh, with uh, various individuals um, to ensure that our legislative package that uh, you all approved makes it through uh, that first gate and on to the next round. Um, we have uh, multiple pieces of aviation legislation. 
most all of it is positive. Uh, most all of it obviously is uh, being driven by yours truly uh, in our agency. But there are a few uh, pieces of legislation that we've had some questions on. Uh, I don't want to call them negative pieces of legislation, but just some questions and some concerns that we have. And we're uh, fielding those. Uh, had a meeting yesterday. Uh, have another meeting today to discuss some of those issues. Um, Mr. Chairman, as you probably are uh, doing the same going through the uh, litany of bills to figure out what the, the legislature wants to do. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun year. Um, I think this is a uh, an interesting year in that a lot of the leadership of the House and the Senate, this is their last session uh, before it changes out. Uh, both the Speaker and the Pro Tem uh, will term out at the end of this session. Um, <clears throat> the Majority Floor Leader in the House uh, will term out at the, at the end of this session, along with several other uh, chairman chairmanships uh, as well as uh, other leaders in the House and Senate. So it's, it's going to be a, a big a big flip in leadership uh, going into the 2025 session. So a lot of a lot of things are on the plate for 24 as we uh, try and close it out with the current pro tem and the current speaker. Uh, on to uh, congressional, uh, as as you all have have seen, the uh, there was a budget compromise or a CR compromise, uh, and a clean CR went through uh, for to basically the beginning of March. Um, of course, there's two different uh, deadlines depending on uh, which area of government you're in. Um, I, uh, I've heard in recent weeks that everyone is hopeful that uh, a full year's budget is going to be done uh, by the, the next deadline. Uh, I've heard maybe, maybe by the end of March. That means they'd have to do another little clean CR to get them through the end of March. Uh, I don't think we're looking at a full year's CR from some of the uh, information I'm hearing, which is obviously good for the aviation world, good for the aviation program. Uh, of course, there's the, the constant uh, issue that we are watching with FAA reauthorization, ensuring that the Monroney Center is protected. Uh, some of you have probably seen in the news the air traffic control uh, training situation and how um, I think some of the rest of the country and maybe some of FAA headquarters believes that uh, air traffic control training could be done better in other ways. Of course, we here in Oklahoma believe it's been done great here in the states, done in a very cost efficient, cost effective manner compared to moving it to some other metropolis or some other area where uh, it might be easier to uh, um, gather the instructors that are needed to train those controllers. So working on that, uh, working obviously closely with the Monroney Center, with our congressional delegation, with the Oklahoma City Chamber, trying to make sure that that asset for Oklahoma is protected. Of course, Commissioner Rich, you know, uh, this isn't the first time we've had this discussion. I don't suspect it will be the last in, in my career. But um, it's, it's, uh, it's always one that comes to the forefront of our mind, given there's over 5,000 employees uh, and a big economic driver for the aviation community here in Oklahoma out there at the Monroney Center. So, so keeping a watchful eye on that, uh, making sure that there's not any funny business that's going to happen. You will probably see some interviews that are going to come out here in the handful of uh, weeks and months ahead about air traffic control training. Uh, know this, uh, if you have questions or if you see people uh, that go, well, why isn't Monroney Center doing this? Or, or why, why, you know, why does it make it seem like Oklahoma's in a, in a bad light? Um, know this, that obviously what you hear in the news is not always true. Um, if you have questions, give me a call. I will give you the truth. Um, if you have friends that have questions uh, based on what they may have seen, give, have them give me a call. I'll give them the truth. Uh, I, not, not everything I can share publicly, uh, but I just know that, that the Monroney Center is, and the, the, the academy at the Monroney Center and their traffic control training system, while it does have its issues, uh, those issues are, do not lie with the Monroney Center. They lie with other areas of the air traffic control hiring process. And so happy to uh, talk with any of you offline or anybody uh, that wants to uh, give our office a call. And, uh, and share some of that. But uh, that is the Legislative Congressional Regulatory Update. Of course, uh, stand for any questions or other comments. Any questions from the members? Uh, Director Artis, I have one. When you were talking about the uh, uh, couple of negative pieces of legislation that you're going to be working on, can you elaborate just briefly on what those are? There, uh, uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's always been a, a couple of UAS bills that are out there that are on the, um, you know, like I said, I don't know if I'd even call them negative at this point, just kind of questionable. Mm. Um, you know, our agency, and given this is an important sector of the industry that's up and coming, uh, we want to see as being a pro UAS state, a pro AAM state. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a healthy balance between safety 
and, and ensuring that these can be functioning in the airspace with traditional manned aircraft. Uh, but we also want to make sure that uh, there's not any undue harm. Um, so there's always a couple of bills every year that pop up regarding UAS. I mean, going back to the, the early days, there was the shoot them down bill um, that, you know, certain individuals wanted to authorize drones to be shot out of the sky. Uh, that has not popped back up in the last five or six years. There's been a, a couple efforts where, well, if law enforcement even wants to touch a drone, they have to get a warrant to be able to fly that. Um, and, and we know that based on, on court cases and legal precedent that that's not the case. Um, and so it's just <clears throat> a couple of those issues on UAS AAM um, that are out there. Uh, those are the, the kind of the ones we're trying to get our hands wrapped around in terms of um, not necessarily negative, but just trying to figure out what's the backstory behind why that legislation was being proposed. Right. Something to watch for. Something for to be watchful on. Yes, sir. Any questions from members? Thank you, Director Arnes. Thank you. Uh, item number seven, airport construction grant program, Mr. Nagabi. I'm sorry, number six, five-year airport construction program. Mr. Young. I wanted to get to Ben. <laughs> well, I, I totally understand that, Mr. Chairman. But good morning, Commissioners. Uh, we only have one programming change this morning that we're requesting, and this is to amend the current ACP to add in uh, two fuel system projects there at Altus. Both of their 100 low lead and their Jet A systems are getting maintenance heavy and those types of things. They're also needing to relocate those so that they can be in a little bit more prime location for the self-service capabilities that look to attract out there. Uh, preliminary estimates for this total project cost is uh, just shy of $1.3 million, in which the uh, there would be $615,000 worth of federal grant funds utilized, uh, our $600,000 worth of state grant funds, our $300,000 apiece for two different systems for the total of $600,000. And then the sponsor at uh, $68,300 is anticipated on how those funding splits will be broken out. Uh, happen, happy to address any questions that the Commission has, but staff recommends approval and I stand for any questions. Any questions from the members? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Second. I have a uh, motion to approve and a second. Uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. All right. Thank you. Motion passes. All right. Now. Now, wait, sir. Now, the anticipated number seven. <laughs> Mr. Nagavi, <laughs> you're recognized, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner. We have an amendment at Westwood Ward uh, Regional Airport to purchase a land at the north end of the runway. The amendment will allow for additional funding due to a transp uh, transposed number and additional fields to complete the acquisition. The additional cost will be over $5,000, and that will be funded with PREP funds. I'm assigning for any questions you may have. Any questions, members? Thank you, sir. Appreciate next item it. is still me if you just want to. I'm sorry? I said next item is for me, too. Yes, number sir. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> number, number eight. <laughs> now you're pushing me, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> item, item number eight, Mr. Nagavi, you're recognized, sir. <laughs> Today's my day. <laughs> <laughs> You're recognized, okay. sir. Go ahead. For the consent ticket, as you know, uh, any commissioner may request that any or all of the items uh, to be considered individually. For the very first item, item A, uh, we have to move it on for the next commission meeting. We're, we're going to uh, do some update for that one. Uh, so let's move on to item B. Uh, for Elk City, uh, the project is to uh, construct a terminal building. Based on the bed, the total project cost is over $2.7 million, and that will be funded with $448,000 of federal fund, a million dollar of a state grant fund, and over $1.3 million of a sponsor matching fund. Next project is still at Elk City. The project is to uh, construct a utility work for the new terminal building and hangar project. Based on the bid, the total cost for the project is $540,000, and that will be funded with over $513,000 uh, of a state grant fund and over $27,000 of a sponsor matching fund. I think Mr. Tom Wister, the city manager, is here. If you want to just come and talk a little bit about it. If you have any comments or if you want to talk about the project. Yeah, yes, absolutely. <coughs> 
Senator Iverster, you're recognized, sir. Yes. <laughs> Representative Ortega, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I first want to uh, uh, thank uh, Director Artes and Commission staff and, and Nick Young for all the work they've done working with the, the City of Elk City. It's been a long time before we've, uh, since we've had major projects done at that airport. We did a, 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 uh, a runway lengthening project uh, probably about 15 years ago, but before that our terminal is, is, is 50 years old. Um, the commission, our city council, uh, tasked me, the city manager, with seeing what we could do. We'd done extensive planning out there to do it, but we'd never put it into action. So I said, well, you got to put your money where your mouth is. They've done that uh, now. So we've got cash reserves. Uh, we're going to spend them on this terminal project, the hangar project, and the utility project. Uh, that's when uh, we, Director Artie's uh, said, you know, we'll, we'll put together a plan. We've already done a lot of planning. Now we can actually uh, bring this to fruition. So we're excited. Uh, we're going to put the new terminal uh, just to the immediate west of the current terminal so we can maintain operations while the building goes on. The, the plan is to then, once we're up in operational, turn, tear down the current terminal building and, and turn it into a uh, further expansion or apron. The new hangar project um, hopefully uh, will to help us attract more business. We've already got some prospects of, of being a contract uh, maintenance facility for a Clovis, New Mexico uh, contract for Citation Aircraft. So we're, we're hopeful that that's going to take place, and I feel very confident it, it will once this new hangar is up and going. So um, we can't thank the commission enough for looking west to us. and. Uh, and our expansion project. And on behalf of the city of Elk City, we, we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Okay, next item, item D. Uh, we have a project at Miami Regional Airport. The project is to construct a new terminal building based on the bed. The total project cost is over $3.2 million, and that will be funded with over $1 million of federal funds, a $1 million of state grant funds, and $1.3 million of a sponsor matching fund. Next project is at Mid America. Uh, the project is to construct a new terminal building based on the bed. The total cost of the project is over $3 million, and that will be funded with $985,000 of federal fund, a $1 million of a state grant fund, and over $1 million of a sponsor matching fund. I think Mr. Jason is here. You're recognized, sir. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, Commissioners, I'm Jason Stusman. I'm uh, Executive Director for the Mid-American Industrial Park. I'm just here to express our gratitude for consideration of this project. Uh, we are, the OAS, OAA and FAA have been great partners with us in expanding our, our airport projects. Uh, we've had several, parallel taxiway, uh, runway extension, uh, a lighting project. So over the years, with the partnership of our engineer at Garver, we've been able to take advantage of a lot of these grant funds. So this one here for us is significant in the fact that it updates a 1970s, 1980s era terminal. So the pilots in our area are so excited. The gratitude that they've had for us for going after that is just beyond belief. So I just wanted to come up here and say thank you to to the OAA and your staff, Grayson particularly, for helping us get through this project. And uh, we're looking forward to, we'll start construction probably, we're, we're going to award this at our February board meeting, and we'll start construction in March. So we hope to have it done by the end of this year. So again, thank you for your consideration. Very good. Thank you, sir. Next item is at Sand Spring Airport, William R. Pork. Uh, the project is to construct a new jet fuel system, and based on the estimate, the cost for the design phase is uh, $51,000, and that will be funded with $25,500 state grant fund and another $25,000 with the sponsor matching funds. Next item, uh, this year also the staff of ODAA entered to contract for four projects, Craxil and Seal Code project. The first project is Salisaw Municipal Airport Based on the bed, the total cost for the project is over $224,000, and that will be funded with over $213,000 of a sponsor matching fund and over $11,000 of, uh, I mean, 
213,000 of the state grant fund and over $11,000 of a sponsor matching fund. In your paper, it's reading like a million dollars, which is not correct. It's just 11,000. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, for next item, at Seminole, uh, the total cost for the project is over $188,000, and that will be funded with over 179,000 of the estate grant fund and over $9,000 of a sponsor matching fund. At Stan Stamper, the total cost for the project is over $210,000. That will be funded with over 200,000 of the state grant fund and over 10,000 of a sponsor matching fund. And last but not least, at Hefner Easley Airport, the total cost for the project is over $139,000. That will be funded with over $132,000 of a state grant fund and about $7,000 of a sponsor matching fund. I'm standing for a question, but staff recommends approval. Okay. Any questions on item number eight? If not, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Move Chairman. Approved by Member Ritz and second by. Just to uh, just to remind everybody, uh, Ben had mentioned that item A of this section yes. would be uh, rolled over. Just right. just to just to, for the record. As a reminder, very good. Okay, I will call the roll, please. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman <clears throat> Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, item number nine, Director Artie, you recognize, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If uh, you'll uh, allow me a digression here for a minute to uh, say a few comments on item eight. Um, what what we've done there is is foundational, um, and I just want to give a, a nice word of thanks to the communities of Elk City, Miami, uh, and of course the Mid, -Industri Mid America Industrial Park. Um, when we received the appropriation that we received uh, at the end of May and that budget passed in the last legislative session. Um, we were given money to go out and specifically improve terminal buildings uh, as a part of that appropriation. Um, I went with hat in hand to four communities in the state of Oklahoma that had told me we'd be issuing a terminal building in the next five years. And I said, well, that's great. How about are you interested now? And in my my gut was, well, I might be lucky I'll get one out of four. If I get one out of four, I'll be happy. Um, the fact that we got three out of four absolutely blew my mind. And the fact that we're able to meet the schedule of having those bids in hand and doing these approvals at the January meeting was tremendous. Uh, the design, to be able to get the design and the architecture done, um, basically from the time, and I was, I was talking to these individuals in these cities and communities in June of last summer, uh, and so they didn't start design until July and August. And the fact that they had those plans done, uh, what normally would have been a 12 to 14 month design cycle for an architectural building like this, something that's gonna be transformational for the community for the next half century, you wanna take a long, hard look at it uh, and think about it. But these communities stepped up to the plate. They said, we'd be willing to do it in the middle of our budget cycles. Uh, and, and not only that, but they, they did it willingly and acceptingly. And so I just want to give a, a nice thank you to those communities for being willing to participate and be, will, be willing to partner with us. Um, and uh, I, hope, I hope this story will uh, move forward to other communities so that they can see these foundational changes in their airport and how that, what that means for the community. These are front doors. Uh, this is going to better uh, entrust those communities to economic development potential for the many decades to come. So I just wanted to say thank you on that for item eight before uh, moving on to item nine. Very good, thank you for the explanation. Uh, on, to, uh, on to item nine, we have a, a couple of uh, prep, prep projects that uh, are before you. And uh, I didn't bring the clicker up here with me, Caitlin, just, just for the record. Um, first is at Elk City, as you heard uh, Mr. Iverster uh, say, um, one of the, the projects that we bid with the terminal building was a large hangar. 100 by 150, um, total cost of $2.14 million. Uh, of course, this is the standard 60-40 uh, split, 60% local, 40% state. Uh, as you can see there on the screen, about $856,000 of state grant funds, uh, almost $1.3 million of, of local funds. 
Uh, this will be the, the foundational uh, business hangar, hopefully, for them to be able to get some tenants into, maybe an aviation business uh, to spur some economic growth in the western part of the state. Uh, Mr. Iverster, do you want to say anything about that? Or are you? Okay, we're good. <laughs> Uh, second project uh, on the list is at the uh, Max Westheimer Airport. Uh, this is for constructing two uh, 100 by 100 hangars, uh, as well as some of the uh, support infrastructure and utilities uh, that are necessary there. Um, as uh, you'll probably hear, this is a, uh, a foundational project for the Westheimer Airport. Uh, they have obviously seen a lot of growth over the years, except for they have not been able to build any hangars. And so we're extremely glad that they're able to take advantage of the program. Uh, total cost of, the, of these uh, projects is about $4.4 .4 million, uh, funded uh, mostly 60-40. They brought a little FA money to the table, but uh, the department share uh, a little over $1.75 million, uh, local share a little over $2.3 million, and of course uh, almost $300,000 of FA money being brought to the table. Uh, I believe they have their uh, airport manager here, Lance Lampkin. Lance, you want to say a few words? Thank you, Grayson. Uh, Chairman Ortega, commissioners, I wanted to come up here on behalf of myself and the University of Oklahoma and thank you for your partnership and investment in these two 100 by 100 hangars. Um, that is monumental for us, but what I'm looking forward to is the future. Not only does this develop two 100 by 100 hangars, but it opens up 24 acres of development, allowing us to go after 28 additional hangars over the coming years. So this is huge. This is monumental for us, and we really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With that, uh, I'll stand for any questions, but staff recommends approval for this consent docket. Any questions on item number nine? So is this still from the appropriations? <coughs> so... Um, Our share. Yes. However, this is the special appropriation we received in the fall of 2022 for the 14 million dollars of discretionary hangar projects so if you'll remember the the prep money that was allocated in the fall of 22 in special session the 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 number we always hear about 250 million dollars of total money going to aviation aerospace 100 million of that came to us as our agency for essentially 80 million dollar or for 20 million dollar projects directed for woodward uh ardmore Will Rogers hangar in Tulsa Tower. Uh, we also got $14 million of hangar money. That was part of the prep hangar competitive program. And of course, $4 million for the commercial air service development program. These hangars that you all are considering here today are that part of that $14 million prep program uh, that we received in the fall of 22. Are so. these hangars, are these just open hangars or do they have office space in them? Uh, these are just gonna be open hangars. Because $4.4 .4 million for two 100 by 100s is about twice what it should cost. There's a lot of, so that's not just hangar costs. There's utilities involved in there. Uh, there's some roadway improvements and a little bit of hangar in front, or a little bit of apron in front of the hangar as well uh, that you're seeing. Okay. Any further questions? If not, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion to approve with a second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Potter? Aye. Chairman Ortega? Aye. Commissioner Ritz? Aye. Commissioner Rainey? Aye. Commissioner Hunter? Aye. Motion passes. Item number 10, Director Artis. Um, as I was uh, mentioning in the uh, answer to uh, Commissioner Potter's question, uh, we obviously have the four large um, we'll call them directed uh, prep projects that are still out there. Ardmore's is under construction, part of Ardmore's is under construction for the uh, piece of the parallel. They're currently in design phase for the utilities part of, of that prep project, utilities and roadway part. Hopefully that'll be bid out uh, sometime this summer. Um, both the MRO hangar at Will Rogers as well as the uh, Tulsa Air Traffic Control Tower uh, are in the final stages of design and should be going out to bid here in quarter one of this year. Uh, that means hopefully we'll either approve those at our March uh, or May meetings for, for consideration, um, but very excited about that. And Woodward um, is got several projects that are under design currently, uh, and I think we will see those uh, particular uh, bid efforts start trickling in here this spring as well. 
I think the first one's going to be their large hangar, uh, as well as the terminal building, uh, followed on by the runway extension and some of the apron improvements that they would like to do. So uh, uh, also to follow up on that, uh, I visited with both the Will Rogers World Airport and the Tulsa International Airport. Uh, as far as the commercial air service uh, program is, is concerned, um, Tulsa International Airport just sent us in their grant application for commercial air service uh, yesterday. Uh, I hear Will Rogers is supposed to be sending us theirs here in the next couple of months. Uh, we'll look at taking those, uh, definitely the Tulsa one at the March meeting, uh, potentially the Will Rogers one at the March or the May meeting as well. Um, if you look in the ACP, uh, for the first two years of the ACP, you'll see some I believe it's purple lines on that uh, ACP document. That is all the hangers that we are funding with the prep money. So uh, if you go in there, you look at the back of the summary sheet, uh, you look at the current year, and you look at next year, uh, all the hangar projects that uh, we are using that $14 million on uh, are listed in the airport construction program. But that, uh, at the end of the day, is the update for the uh, prep program. Stand for any questions. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number 11. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item number 11, um, it's been a minute since we have uh, considered any action to remove and or uh, close uh, an airport, but it's not something that is unfamiliar territory to us. Um, since 1999, when the initial Oklahoma airport uh, system what plan document was developed. Uh, we had uh, over 130 airports in there that were in the federal and state system. Uh, since that time, we have been uh, a responsible steward of public monies, and we have taken 16 of those airports out of the system. Uh, some of those closed, some of those just removed from the system and became uh, public use airports that uh, were operated by the municipality solely, not re receiving any grant funds from us or the FAA. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, we all uh, have heard of the story about Lake Murray and, and how we had to go down the route of closing Lake Murray. Um, the Oklahoma Department of Tourism and Recreation reached out to us uh, several months ago, um, I think it was right before the Thanksgiving holiday, and, and informed us uh, that uh, Lake Texoma State Park was under consideration for, for some development. Uh, I think some of you may have seen that in the news recently of some of the announcements. Uh, of course, this is not unlike what they tried several years ago. Um, if you'll remember, we uh, had a uh, potential uh, removal of the system back in 2013. Of course, the uh, private development did not move forward at that time, uh, and so therefore uh, the closure was not sought. Of course, uh, since that time, no, no work on the airport has been done outside of the uh, county commissioner going out and doing some uh, rubber sealing of the cracks, which I would equate to putting a Band-Aid on a broken leg. Um, the pavement out there is very deteriorated. Uh, the airport does not have any based aircraft, nor does it have services. Uh, it is utilized uh, somewhat infrequently. I have driven past it a handful of times. Uh, also have played a little golf there at the golf course across the highway, and occasionally you'll see an airplane uh, parked on the ramp, but it is not uh, a frequent, frequently used airport. Of course, we can look at that uh, in more depth and more detail by putting a system out there that would track uh, aircraft operations. Um, now that this uh, development announcement has been made for the uh, Lake Texoma State Park there uh, with the, the Hard Rock and some of the other activities that are going to be taking place, the uh, Tourism Department has asked us to inquire with the FAA about how could we uh, look to move to, to remove that airport from the system, close it, uh, and of course then develop the other airports in the area up, one of those airports being the Medill Airport. So what you are considering here today um, is joining a request with the Department of Tourism uh, to send a letter uh, to the FAA uh, to figure out what steps are needed to close this airport. Uh, as you all will remember in Lake Murray, um, we had to repay grants uh, by reinvesting those in the system elsewhere in the state of Oklahoma. We didn't have to cut a check to the FAA. We just simply said we were taking the money that Lake Murray had taken from the FAA and we're reinvesting in other airports near Lake Murray. Uh, this airport is unobligated. It has not taken federal or state grants in the last 20 years. So that's a, one of the questions that we're asking FAA is what is the, uh, uh, what, what are the steps? Do we have to go do the repayment? Do we have to do a uh, acquisition or appraisal of the land uh, to figure out what that would cost? Um, and so that's what we are considering here today is, is joining our 
uh, almost like a letter of intent uh, requesting with the FAA what is the uh, desire, what is the, what is the requirements for our desire to potentially remove this airport from the NIPIAS and close it. Uh, of course, in addition to that, uh, we would consider a 30-day comment period to the public um, prior to final action being considered at our next commission meeting. So that is what we are uh, discussing here today. Um, happy to answer questions. Uh, we want to do this in the open, public, and transparent world because at the end of the day, we are pro-aviation and supporters of aviation aerospace. But the runway has come to a particular point in time where if we are, if we are going to leave it in the system, we're going to have to do some major upgrades to the airport to the tune of, of potentially multiple hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, uh, because the pavement is beyond its useful life to simply go out and do a, a crack seal repair or seal coat uh, and even overlay. I think it would need to be fully reconstructed. So I'll stop talking at that point in time uh, and see if there are any questions or comments from members of the commission. Who suddenly finds themselves with ownership of this if we abandon it? It will still be the it will still be ownership <laughs> of tourism. So tourism has a long term lease for portion of the property. Tourism owns <clears throat> the other portion of the property. The the portion of the property they have under a long term lease is owned by the Army Corps of Engineers as a part of the lakefront property. Um, so that that is at the end of the day what I've been told is it's still the ownership is not changing any. Tourism may lease out this property for commercial development, for uh, cabin development, um, as a part of what they propose down there. This identifier F31, is that right? So yeah. it's on the north. <clears throat> would that not be it for the future development? That airport be accessed for people coming in to. We we asked that question, uh, and they said that what's the potential to extend the airport to 5,000 feet? Uh, and we said basically the airport is at its max length right now because it's got a highway on one end and a finger of the lake on the other. Um, and so uh, once we were, once we informed them of that, they were not interested in keeping it open for, from that perspective. They were very interested. So we have a project in our five-year airport construction program to move the Medill runway, similar to what we did at Bristow, uh, move that runway over and make it a 4,000 foot runway with the potential to expand to 5,000 foot in the future. And of course, the next nearest airport to the east is um, Durant. And so Durant obviously has a 6,800 foot runway jet capable. They were much more interested in being able to use those two airports as entry points to this uh, future development compared to just a purely uh, essentially what we'll call a, a GA light aircraft only facility. There are eight, there are 17, about to be 18 hangar home communities in the state of Oklahoma that host over 200 aircraft. These are small grass strip runways that these companies buy and then they sell the lots surrounding the grass or mud strip runway. Right. Most of them aren't lighted. They're in very bad condition. But this is what people were willing to do. Does it not make sense? How long did you say this runway was? 3,000. 3, 3, Does it not make sense to sell off the land around it once you get it out of the NIPIA system? Because if I were commerce, that's what I'd be doing. To, and the proceeds from the sales of lots, home building lots, then pay for that runway restoration. I, <coughs> I had suggested that. They, times over. they they still seemed more interested in developing it as a non non airport asset um, I think the the struggle that they had in their mind is if, if it was a good asset you know a good runway like if it was at Carlton Landing which you know they have a PCI of you know mid 80s to high 80s PCI here is probably south of 50 um, and so I think at the end of the day <clears throat> when they saw well to get this airport up to standards um, to even be a, a usable selling asset for them to go sell those lots, they they just they they did not want to incur that expense themselves as a as a department of tourism. I, I look at it kind of like going back to the Murray. You know, you've got all the development around the lake. I mean, it's a great spot in Oklahoma, and you've got lots of pots. It'd be nice if we had a grass strip to fly into and camp and go to the lake with all this development. I just. I just see the opportunity that more people, small GA airplanes, would tell draggers like to fly in there. And that, you know, I, with that development, I'd be excited to go down there. So, I'd, you know, I I can't really see closing it. Uh, you know, even if it was just a grass, you know. Yeah. Grass won't run. Right now, is it asphalt or concrete? It's asphalt. 
it's all asphalt. What kind of, I mean, I don't even know what's down there, but any kind of navigational aids or what? Um, it was, <clears throat> I think it had lights at one time. I don't believe those lights are functional anymore. Um, I believe it is restricted to daytime VFR only. Um, Windsock would be the only navigational aid that they have down at that facility at this point. So. Any further questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? So moved. So, so go ahead. So, my second. Okay, did you want to? So, what we're basically, <clears throat> what are we asking for at this point? At this juncture in time, we are <clears throat> considering to join a request with tourism to send a letter to the FAA saying that we are interested in figuring out what is necessary to close this airport. What what are the Take what the are the action step. steps that are necessary to close this airport? We'll also include a 30-day comment period um, prior to final action being considered at the, the March meeting, our, our next meeting. So if we can get a 30, you know, a, a comment period out, um, then we'll be able to have that comment period between here and the March meeting, um, see what comments we get back, and then obviously you all would take final action on that um, at, the, at the March meeting. So all we're doing today is is to get comments out there. Yeah, yeah, to, to send the Take letter the to, the FAA, to the FAA and then and then open up a comment period for that. Okay. Will the comment period open up after we get the re reply or the request from the FAA? No, the, the comment the period before, so? would essentially open up tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So we would we would say here's you know here's the here's the potential intent and desire of the agent of the of the department. Uh, interested parties please send us your comment via email back to uh, back to the agency um, of course we'll receive those comments I think in the Lake Murray we had no more than 10 but I think more than a couple just a few um, so it was in the high single digits um, so yeah that, that's what we're considering Commissioner today is to move into that step how will the uh, comment period be published or We'll, we'll send it out to our distribution list, which is probably north of 10,000 people at this point in time, um, and we'll post it on our website. Uh, we'll obviously send it to all the aviation groups. I was talking to the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association yesterday, and we'll have, it, have them send it out to their network, uh, make sure that the, the totality of the public is, in, is interested. At least those that are interested have an opportunity to comment. Any more questions? Do I have a motion to proceed to the next step of requesting information from the FAA to determine what needs to take place to close the airport, correct? I think we, we had a yeah, motion. I yeah, we had a motion. We're looking for a second. We're looking for a second. I'll second the motion. Go. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. I vote no on it. Commissioner Hunter. I'm voting no on it. Motion fails. Motion fails. Very good. Moving on to the next item, item number 12. Aviation and Aerospace Education Update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. I'm always happy to be here to share uh, the work we're doing with aviation education. The, the first item uh, mentions that um, we have approved, or AOPA has approved, uh, 13 new schools so far. Schools have until May 31st to apply to teach the curriculum for the next school year, 24-25. And I thought you might be interested because some of you have asked me about some of these schools and uh, we do finally have them in the system with AOPA, uh, that being Bethany High School that will be joining next year, Bixby High School, Blackwell High School, Edmond Memorial, Edmond North, and Edmond Santa Fe High School. So we're very pleased about all three Edmond High Schools uh, joining the program. Idabel High School, Jinx High School, obviously another large uh, school system in eastern Oklahoma, Sepulpa as well. Savannah High School in southeastern Oklahoma, Silo in southern Oklahoma, and Tulsa Union, who 
the Tulsa Union had the ninth grade academy on board this year, but we'll be moving it to the actual high school as well. So we'll have the ninth grade academy as well as Tulsa Union High School. And then just this past week, Choctaw High School <coughs> uh, being approved by the AOPA. So 13 new schools. Uh, that's the work that I've been doing, particularly in the last few weeks, is touching base with those schools that I know are in the process and then still rolling out ideas to school leaders across the state. Uh, the next item, recent school visits, I did visit Paula, on. Uh -huh. How many does that bring us up to? That brings us up to 101. Wow. That's I know. Terrific. I'm really, really excited about that. And, and not, not that it's about a number. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday to the director. I, you know, I feel a real responsibility of supporting these 100 schools, and not, it's not just about signing them up and hoping that they can build a program. I think we need to continue our, our work in supporting them in, in any way that we can as, as we move forward. I still think we have a lot of, I have a lot of work to do in western Oklahoma and in the panhandle uh, and making sure that, that statewide uh, we're rolling this out and that school leaders know. I've said this a million times and you've heard me say it. You can't just call a school superintendent and say, why don't you start an aviation program? You know, it takes some uh, real explanation and some thinking on their part on how they might make it work. Uh, but I did go to Guthrie a week before last and already since that time, the superintendent called me Friday and said that they had already met with the airport staff at the uh, Edmund Guthrie Airport and, and really excited about moving f forward. So uh, that's good. I love when they began to think how it might look in their district and start planning. I've also visited, uh, did an initial visit with Oklahoma City Public Schools last week and have another one set uh, soon with Dr. McDaniel and the superintendent of Oklahoma City Public. So really pleased about that as we move forward at looking at the metro area. Uh, I mentioned Choctaw already being approved, Stonewall High School, a little school south of Ada, uh, very interested in joining in and I, we welcome them. And then I was Friday in Altus at Southwest Technology Center and they hosted three or four small western uh, Oklahoma school districts in to hear the presentation and to learn more about how they might move forward. So yes, that puts us right now at just over 100 schools with more work to be done um, as we go through the spring to finalize the schools that we'll have for next fall. Um, also on this report, on January 11th, uh, the morning of January 11th, we were at the Capitol to roll out what we mentioned to you last meeting, which is the Bessie Coleman Aviation Afternoon After School All-Star Program. Um, Gigi Coleman, Bessie Coleman's great niece, is very, uh, proud of the work we're, that we're doing in Oklahoma and pretty much has chosen us to field test her after school all-star program. And so we selected Weatherford Public Schools and Prior Public Schools, a school from each part of the side of the state, as well as Springdale Elementary in Tulsa Public Schools to roll out this after school program. Basically it's a 10 week, a sixth and seventh grade program that the students will have a chance to stay after school hear guest speakers, do hands-on activities, learn about aviation, and it's our hope that this will go well and that we'll be able to then move it into more Oklahoma schools uh, for their middle schools and their upper elementary. All of these high schools are going, what can we do? We need our younger kids ready to enter these high school aviation programs. So what can we do with middle school and elementary? And this is one way that we're doing that. Uh, Senator Pugh helped us roll it out that day at the Capitol. It was a really nice ceremony and things went, went very well. Um, the last thing I will mention is last Tuesday's uh, Thunder Arrow Day, uh, which took place at the uh, PACOM Center in the afternoon. We had about 450 uh, AOPA students there that day. They got to spend the afternoon uh, touring uh, booths and talking with industry folks and then they heard a panel of speakers. You see them there in the arena and they listened to a panel of speakers. Um, then that night they were invited back in to the, the Thunder game with the Trailblazers. So they had a wonderful day and, and had a chance then to visit with each other and, and to learn more about aerospace and aeronautics. 
So that's what I have uh, this morning. I'll be delighted to answer any questions you might have about the work that we're doing. Any questions for Ms. Keating? Thank you for Thanks. what you're doing. I think if we had another two or three, you know, telling what this, this state would see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're working on We'd it. We'd run out of schools. Exactly. All right, uh, moving on to item number 13, Director Artis. It's funny you should mention that. My, uh, my line in these interviews that we were doing for our education coordinator position, I say our, our first step was try to clone Paula. Failed there. <laughs> so now we're just trying to find her twin out there that already exists. We, there's a... How many airports in the system? 105. Uh, 108. In our in our system, 108. Yeah. Four of those are G, four of those are commercial. 104 GA. And we're at how many schools now? Uh, 87 currently, yeah. but 101. Cool. Something yeah. more. We got as many schools as we have airports. Well, I say we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna yeah. exceed that. Yeah. I can guarantee you. That, I can guarantee you we're gonna exceed that number because there. we have what 500 and some odd school district. Uh, 500 and some odd school districts in the in the state and. I can assure you there's probably, uh, there's only 134 or 35 public use facilities, 108 that are in our system eligible for ballot for state dollars. So wow. we'll, we'll, we'll exceed that number soon. Good. And then we're gonna be in a world of hurt because we gotta find <laughs> three Paulos to help us on the trail. That will be a nice problem to have. That mm -hmm. will be a nice problem to have. Uh, on to uh, item 13, uh, commission's considering approving a $5,000 sponsorship for Arrow Oklahoma Day at the Capitol for April 3rd, uh, 930 to 2 o'clock. Uh, staff recommends approval. I'll stand for any questions. Any questions? Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve and a second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item number 14, Director Artis, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item 14 is our uh, regular slate of uh, partnerships that we do with the Department of Commerce for uh, conferences and trade shows. Uh, this is the same list that you have seen in past years. Um, go down the list here. We have MRO Americas uh, in Chicago, April 9th to the 11th. Uh, AUVSI uh, in San Diego from April 22nd to the 25th, uh, Farnborough in Farnborough, uh, July 22nd through the 26th, the EA Oshkosh, uh, July 22nd through the 28th, and then the NBAA National Business Aviation Conference uh, in October 22nd through 24th in Las Vegas. Um, this is the slate of conferences and trade shows that we are considering. Uh, we'll say that you all have already approved uh, HAI, which is the other one uh, that we uh, traditionally go to, uh, we had you approve that December meeting because that is uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks, um, and Commerce needed our uh, approval for that sooner than what we could give them here at the January meeting. Staff recommends approval. Stand for any questions. Did we actually see any result out of our participation in the show in Paris last year? So, relationship of that one. Results in terms of the state, yes. We have results of great, that the Paris and Farnborough Air Shows are the largest. Um, I know they're large. They're, no, they're I'm, the I'm, largest there is. But they, they, they are the, anything for Oklahoma. They are the largest return of projects that Commerce has that they then come back and work the state. So if you look at the list of projects that we have, um, or we, the state, not that we, our agency, but Commerce has, the largest lion's share of those comes from Paris and Farnborough. Um, the next one would be MRO Americas, is number two is what they've told me. Followed on by NBAA uh, and HAI and then AUVSI and, and Oshkosh. So in terms of wins, we don't have, you, you don't get a win from a trade show immediately for the state's perspective. Now a lot of the companies that were up there with us did get wins. They got additional contracts while they were there at the trade show. They were having the additional uh, conversations with their partnerships, with their businesses, with their uh, people they're selling to, with the people they're buying from. But don't uh, they have booths of their own? They could, they could have booths of their own, but they partner in the state booth as a reduced benefit, reduced cost benefit to that particular company. So they may only pay $10,000 to partner in the state booth, which the state has a large booth, so they get a larger presence compared to if they were gonna go do their own 
small 10 by 10 booth. They are in with a, another you know, 10 by 10 company. It's going to cost them more to be in that booth than it is to have a kiosk at uh, the state of Oklahoma booth. Not only that, those companies can tap into some uh, economic development dollars to reduce their share of going to those shows. So they have, they have a, the Commerce has a federal grant for international work that allows them to be able to reduce that cost down for some of those companies. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any further questions? Having none, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Motion to approve and a second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Commissioner Rainey. Aye. Commissioner Hunter. Aye. Okay. I'm moving on to item number 15, Director Ortiz. Item 15, uh, consideration of a uh, sponsorship to send uh, Tulsa Technology students to the MRO Americas competition. Um, they, uh, part of the conference hall uh, at one end is an uh, area where A&P students can get together and they'll do competitions on rebuilds, uh, uh, welding, all kinds of different aspects. Uh, last year we uh, approved them to, to go uh, and they had a great time. Uh, they uh, definitely placed in several areas. Um, they have a pretty good team there at the Tulsa Technology Center, um, and they've asked our consideration to provide an additional sponsorship this year to send them back to uh, Chicago uh, April 8th through 11th. Staff recommends approval, but I'll stand for any questions. Any questions from members? So what did we do last year? $5,000. Okay. okay. Same, same, same as last year. Because you said additional. Oh, it, yeah. additional year now. Okay, we're, yeah, okay. it's, yeah, going back for another another <laughs> round of competition. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any more questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Move approval. Okay. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Potter. Aye. Chairman Ortega. Aye. Commissioner Ritz. Aye. Mr. Rainey? Aye. Mr. Hunter? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Moving on to item number 16, Director Ortiz. Uh, unmanned aircraft systems partnership. So if you all will recall, um, going back to the prep monies, um, while we received $100 million of uh, prep money, other agencies throughout the state of Oklahoma also received money. Uh, our friends at OSIDA uh, received $5 million for radar infrastructure. Uh, we are currently working with them to put out an RFP uh, to bring radar infrastructure out there. Um, we don't believe that's going to cost the full $5 million. Uh, the law says that while the first foremost primary uh, interest is OSIDA, it once, once that gets taken care of, we can look to other uh, places around the state where we can do other radar installations. Uh, of course, with the $2 million we received for UAS infrastructure investment in last year's appropriations, uh, we also have our own money to go and invest in uh, potential UAS and AAM infrastructure across the state of Oklahoma. Uh, our strategic plan, uh, which is currently uh, being finalized and will be uh, wrapped up here in the next month or so, uh, is detailing some of those things that we as a state need to be investing in to ensure we are seen as a go-to testing and development hub for UAS and AAM activity uh, in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, one of the things that we have been working on, uh, and some of you have probably seen in the news, is Tulsa uh, received a uh, almost $30 million Build Back Better grant uh, to, for advanced mobility and advanced autonomy. Uh, they are looking to move into uh, the next step of uh, that grant process, which is called the Tech Hub uh, competition. Um, so they were awarded a first round grant as a part of the tech hub to designate them as a tech hub that then allows them to go into a competition for potentially $75 million. Um, one of the challenges is that $75 million potential award can't be put in any permanent infrastructure. Uh, it all has to be temporary uh, and or programmatic uh, projects. So they came to us uh, last year uh, after the tech hub announcement and said, okay, 
you, the Oklahoma Department of Aerospace and Aeronautics, you are the UAS and AAM clearinghouse for the state. You're the go-to organization in state government here in Oklahoma uh, for these activities. Would you be willing to partner with us uh, on our Tech Hub proposal to help us potentially do some of those uh, infrastructure activities that we would need? So what you're here today considering is a partnership to say that we would uh, commit to investing in some of those permanent infrastructure items, uh, radar, uh, detection systems, uh, that will allow the testing and eventual commercial operations, because this is, this is more than just being a testing and development hub. We want to eventually allow commercial operations and commercial drone delivery uh, to occur uh, if Tulsa is finally selected as a tech hub as a part of their application package. So that's what you're considering today as a partnership. Um, as an example, the, the radar costs that we're planning on for Clinton Sherman uh, are about eight hundred fifty to nine hundred thousand uh, dollars. We would expect a, a mirror of that here for for Tulsa. Um, some of the command and control uh, infrastructure uh, is in that same realm, um, and this is over a five-year time period. So this is not a you got to do it in the next six months. This is over a, a five-year window. Um, if you all authorize this partnership. Um, what this does is allows us to join their application. Uh, and then of course from there, if uh, they are selected, we would likely go forward with multiple RFPs like we are doing for Clinton Sherman right now to help the state invest in some of the permanent infrastructure uh, radar and detection systems that are needed to ensure that Tulsa can be stood up as a UAS AAM uh, development hub in activity. So that's what you're considering today. Um, this is a, a five-year project uh, that would be occurring from 2024 through probably 2029, if not 2030, depending on when the award actually happens. Um, obviously, this is critical to our standing as an agency for UAS uh, integration and ensuring this is safely integrated into the airspace of the state of Oklahoma, that we don't have any uh, unfortunate mix-ups with manned aircraft uh, in the state of Oklahoma. We want to be seen as that go-to hub uh, and continue the good work that Doug has been doing in this area, working with law enforcement, working with first responders, uh, working with commercial drone operators to, to get some of these activities uh, placed around the state. And of course, Tulsa uh, seems to be ahead of the curve in a lot of respects, given some of their past grant awards. Um, so that being said, I know it's uh, something big we've thrown at your feet, but I'll definitely open it up to any questions or comments you may have. Uh, and stand here for what you may be interested in. Any questions, members? What's Tulsa's part of the deal? I mean, I'll, they've applied for this grant. And so they, they will, will apply. They have not actually applied okay. yet. Um, deadline, I believe, is at the end of February. Um, so Tulsa has uh, multiple sources of money that they're going to be throwing into this from okay. the OSU angle, from the uh, George Kaiser Family Foundation angle. Uh, the city of Tulsa is very interested in the uh, drone as a first responder concept. Uh, they've been looking at that very heavily over the last 12 months, trying to figure out how can we get our fire department, police department uh, to utilize drones as a first responder to improve accuracy of the response times, but also reduce the eventual cost of, of the response needed for the initial response to uh, an emergency crisis. Um, the uh, Osage Nation is also involved, uh, given the uh, facility they have up there um, in uh, northeast Tulsa, the old uh, downtown Tulsa Air Park that's been turned into a, a UAS park, so to speak. Uh, and so that's, that, those are the players that are involved. Um, and in terms of the, the money that is being uh, sought, it's a $75 million potential award from uh, the federal government but being matched with uh, 10 and 20 percent matches here and there from OSU, from Tulsa, from obviously if, if we chip in, our, our portion would be a, a considered a part of that, uh, the state of Oklahoma. So that, that's the, the totality of what they're looking to submit to the federal government for this uh, Tulsa Tech Hub, for the Tech Hub uh, opportunity. Um, and Tulsa is the only one in Oklahoma uh, and maybe the only one across the country uh, that is focused on a tech hub for UAS and advanced autonomy. So, it would so be the a, intent, obviously, they're ready to have it be statewide impact. It, it's yeah. the the goal is for Northeast Oklahoma first, but then eventually our goal is to try and bring what they're doing in Northeast Oklahoma to 
to the rest of the state of Oklahoma. That, that's our goal, and, and I know they are cognizant of that. Um, you know, obviously Tulsa's Tulsa in Northeast Oklahoma, but OSU's involvement, our involvement, we want to bring this to the rest of the state uh, and see the successful. So if we can implement it in Tulsa, the goal is, okay, well then we can implement it in the rest of the state. It's almost like a proving ground, so to speak. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? So our commitment on, on this particular part of it, what, where, I mean, are we approving the, any funds or are we? So we're, we're, not expend, we're not approving the direct expenditure of any funds okay. at this point in time. So we're not setting a level of monetary investment at this point. What mm -hmm. we are saying is we're going to partner with them on these items. So radar infrastructure, uh, support of that radar infrastructure, uh, command and control infrastructure. We would then come back to you for formal approval once those RFPs have been issued. Um, if we're going to own it ourselves, then obviously we'd issue an RFP, or potentially if the uh, organization in Tulsa is going to own it, then we'd issue a grant to that organization as a part of our effort. But that is, you know, right now this is all committing partners to say, hey, we are interested in supporting you in this juncture in time. And essentially what we would be saying is we have these funds available from this $5 million pot and this $2 million pot. And then the final cost would then be uh, determined after that. And you all would have another round of approval once we have those final and firm costs before we enter into any kind of contract with a radar procurement uh, entity or before we give a grant out to any public entity out there. Essentially, this is like a, a letter of support saying that we are interested in joining the partnership that is the Tulsa Tech Hub proposal. Very good. Any further questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Potter? Aye. Chairman Ortega? Aye. Commissioner Ritz? Aye. Commissioner Rainey? Aye. Commissioner Hunter? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number 17. Caitlin Wade. Commissioners, can you hear me? Okay, just making mm -hmm. sure. Um, just a few upcoming events that we have. Um, I do want to note that the ODIA legislative reception is next Monday, um, so I hope that you can all make that. As you can see from our slate of projects, we do have um, a lot of runway openings, ground breakings, ribbon cuttings that we will be planning throughout the spring, and so um, as those dates are planned, those will be shared. Um, I will also note in April, we do have Aero Day on the 3rd, but we are also partnering with the Innovation District for that whole first week of April. So there will be events throughout the week um, that we will be partnering with them on. And so um, as we have those finalized, we will share those with you as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Item number 18, Director Artis. Mr. Chairman, this might qualify as the shortest director's report ever, so let the record reflect. We're going to try and get everyone out of here on time. <laughs> uh, of course, it was, you know, uh, since our December meeting, we've had some Christmas and we've had New Year's and um, we've been hunkered down when it was in single digit temperatures. But uh, we had a few airport meetings. Uh, went to uh, Stan Stamper and Vanita uh, back on December 15th. Um, had some good conversations with them. Of course, I think you all have seen the news about Vanita and the uh, theme park development that they have up there and that's spurred in a lot of interest to the airport and how can the airport and the aviation facilities in that area play a role. Uh, followed that up with a Carlton Landing visit after the first of the year on January 3rd. Of course, you know Carlton Landing is, is growing and developing quite, uh, quite nicely um, and wanted to visit with them about how they're going to spend their federal money uh, or I guess how we're going to spend our federal money out at Carlton Landing now that they are eligible and have 10 based aircraft and are classified in the federal system. Uh, Tinker Air Force Base strategic planning meeting. Uh, as you all know, we involve uh, a lot of things with our uh, federal partners, uh, whether it's the FAA or Tinker or the other bases or the Air National Guard units. Um, and we are not the only players in that. Of course, we have uh, member membership associations like ODIA. Uh, the Oklahoma Defense Industry Association, the Air and Space Forces Association, uh, and others. And so we all wanted to get around the, t around the table to discuss protocol and process procedure as we go and invite some of these uh, high-ranking military officials uh, to our events, whether it's Aero Day at the Capitol, Women in Aviation Day, 
uh, if they want to come speak to, to a class, what, what's the proper round? So we had a good meeting with their protocol and PR team there at Tinker. Uh, you see that's uh, myself and uh, Air Base Wing Commander, uh, Colonel Abby Rochetta, Sandra, uh, and of course several other players from uh, our team around the, the state of Oklahoma. On uh, January 8th, hopefully uh, you all tuned in, uh, were tuned in that morning to uh, KOCO Channel 5. I had a nice interview there uh, talking about the agency, talking about uh, Sandra's new role. Um, this was Sandra's first uh, live interview on TV. She did wonderful. I tried to get her to do it solo. We're still in the instruction phase. I'm going to kick her out and do a solo flight next time, cut the back of her shirt off once she does it. So. Um, but it was good. Uh, we had a great opportunity, and obviously we love Chase Rutledge and all the things he's able to do for us um, at Channel 5, but that was a, a great little interview there. Um, these next two items, um, Fort Sill on January 16th and Tulsa on January 24th. I was originally scheduled to go, and so therefore that's why it was in my director's report. Unfortunately, the Capitol was calling, and I could not attend uh, either one of those meetings. But um, they had a, a similar meeting down at Fort Sill uh, that, they had, that we had at Tinker, kind of talking about protocol, how can we become better partners with Fort Sill, how can we engage them. Obviously, they're more of the defense side, but they have a lot of uh, aviation activities going on uh, in the UAS sector, especially with their counter UAS school designation. Um, I know Sandra and Doug and team were down there. Um, and then uh, TUL Customs Facility Groundbreaking, so you I am sure some of you saw the news uh, about Tulsa's uh, new uh, wing of their airport uh, to prepare for commercial uh, international travel and obviously the customs facility that's going to be needed to enable that. Um, and uh, Caitlin was able to uh, represent the agency there uh, at that uh, particular, uh, particular event. So uh, no, sorry, that was Nick that was there, that one, yes. I, I know, I know, I know. I, uh, I had, had my notes confused. Uh, Caitlin was at Tulsa last Friday at, a, at another, another area doing business for us. So we're just doing so many things, sometimes it's hard to keep track. But at the end of the day, uh, they expect the Tulsa Customs Facility to be done sometime at the end of 2025. Uh, and of course, uh, that will allow uh, international commercial air travel. Uh, don't get anybody's hopes up. We're not talking about Paris or London or Japan or China. Uh, I think what we're really talking about here is probably south of the border, uh, some recreational destinations to, to Mexico uh, or the Bahamas or, uh, or maybe Central America, um, at least to start. Uh, that's, that's, what they're, that's what both Tulsa and Oklahoma City are looking for. Oklahoma City built their customs facility in, or built the shell of the customs facility into the new terminal when they redid that a couple of years ago. They're also going through a, a process to uh, redo the interior of that to prepare it for a customs facility. So they're both, both airports are rocking and rolling, very excited about the potential of international flights. But that is the end of my director's report. I'll stand for any questions. Any questions? No? Any uh, concluding remarks, Director Artis? Uh The only thing I would say is that uh, I think the, the whole team, and I think you all will be happy to hear that I have a, a new executive assistant uh, and a new uh, assistant to the commission uh, that will be joining us uh, February 5th, um, her first day. She comes from a, a great company here uh, in Oklahoma, and so uh, love to introduce her to you via email, and then uh, hopefully you'll see her at the, the March meeting. Um, so, and we are currently going through, uh, as you heard me joke about, we're currently going through the process to find ourselves an education coordinator. Got a couple more interviews this afternoon. So, uh, fun things ahead, and uh, looking forward to uh, all that there is to offer in the aviation, aerospace, and defense arena. Very good. Members, any concluding remarks? I'd like to make one suggestion, if I can, and I think it, it falls in line with um, uh, Commissioner Hunter's uh, questioning in, in terms of our partnership and, and sponsorships. Um, and I know that everyone has a way to measure any type of a, um, a positive feedback on, on these things. And I think, um, again, in line with what he was asking, does, does the chamber, when we partner with the chamber, do they have metrics that they measure any type of response or any type of, uh, of a um, uh, outcome on some of those uh, shows that, that they attend? That they do have metrics. Um, I will say that they are uh, very guarded with those metrics because of the uh, nature of their business and the economic development world. I have asked um, for just the raw. You don't get to be guarded. You have to 
to sell me on why I, I should invest in you. I, I understand. Um, and so that, that discussion has been ongoing. I know there's been a discussion at Commerce with leadership in the state that says, okay, do we need to be going to all these trade shows? The list that you saw uh, that was approved earlier is not the full slate of aviation aerospace trade shows that Commerce goes to. It is the ones that we believe, as a staff, are the most important for us to be at and so while you saw you know, five on there, we go to six, um, there's another four or five in addition to what that is that Commerce goes to that they consider aviation, aerospace, and defense trade shows. Um, the Air and Space Forces Association, the MRO Europe, the uh, AUSA, the Army show, uh, the SHOT show that they just came back from. Um, but we, don't, we, we, we draw the line somewhere. We don't always partner with Commerce wherever they should go. We, we do draw the line somewhere in the sand. Um, and to me, the, you know, your, your mention of return, the return for us as an agency is one, being there to help commerce, being that technical expert, but two, it's also being there to connect with our existing companies and to connect with those companies that are in the, that are in the industry uh, without having going to those trade shows, and we certainly don't have to, we miss that connection opportunity others get it. And so that is the challenge that, that we are as we're trying to balance that, you know, need for awareness and, and the public dollar and what do we spend versus making sure we are able to connect and, and be a steward and a resource for the industry. Um, and so, yeah, we, we have asked for commerce and I would suspect um, that after some of the things that they are experiencing, um, that they would be willing to, to give us some of those aggregated numbers. I'll ask again uh, after this meeting Last year, I'd asked for an aggregate number, um, and they, they threw some rough figures at me, but I'd asked for per show. I said, okay, here's how many meetings, here's how many projects came out of those meetings where they, uh, I think they, they numerically order them one, two, three, one being the highest priority, three being the lowest priority in terms of interest of Oklahoma and interest of wanting to move. Um, so I've asked for some of those aggregated numbers, and, and potentially uh, you, Mr. Chairman, uh, could help in that regard um, with some of the, the OMES conversations that I know are being had with Commerce right now on some of their overall trip justifications. Mm -hmm. So we may we may try and see how that uh, works out. Works out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think it's important. I, I think it's, our presence is important at, the, at these trade shows and and, and these uh, businesses because if we're not there, there's no recognition. And uh, so I think, you know, we need to put our face out there and let people see it, let businesses know that we're there and we're ready to do business. And, and I, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, uh, contribution that the agency makes. So any further comments? All right. New business, no new business. The next meeting will be, um, our next meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, March 6, 2024 here in the first floor conference room at the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Um, so with that, uh, I have a motion to adjourn if we're done. So move. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Very good. We're adjourned. <laughs>